Hi everyone and good morning. Welcome back to our art channel. So today we are going to be learning how to make um, a landscape using some common materials in our houses. And we are going to be creating our landscape using a background, a middle ground, a foreground, and we are going to be making kind of a collagraph type of print out of it. But we're going to be using crayons instead of printing ink. So let's get started. First things first, when we're talking about a landscape, we often find in a landscape a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. So if you go and look at any painting, drawing, or photo um, of something like a landscape, you're looking across a field, or you're looking at a bunch of houses, or you're looking at an ocean, you will always see things that are really far back in the background. The middle ground is always in the middle, and then the closest to you is the foreground, or I like to think of the front ground. Now, if I were to have my hand all the way back here, it's pretty small, right? But if I bring it up closer to my face, is it bigger or smaller than back here? It's bigger right here. So the background, things are really tiny. The middle ground, things get a little bit bigger, but then if I push my hand forward, it's even larger. So things that are in the front foreground are larger than things all the way in the background. So we're gonna use that tip thing about your hand, how big and small it is, um, depending on how close or far away it is from you. So that's what we're creating today. And now I'm gonna show you the steps to making our collagraph running. Here we go. Here are the supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need um, some old cereal boxes or I have an uh, old box that has cans of Sprite in it, or granola bar boxes, or some kind of thin cardboard sort of surface. You're going to need a sheet of paper. You're going to need scissors, a pencil, some glue. You can use liquid glue. You could use a glue stick and some crayons to do our rubbing afterwards. So go gather all of those materials and we'll get started. Now that you have all of your supplies gathered up, I want you to find a piece that's going to be your very, very, very back background. So this is going to be like our working surface, what we're going to build our um, printing kind of plate up on top of. Now we're going to put our background on top of this, then our middle ground on top, and then our foreground on top of that. So you just need kind of some kind of working surface. I chose to cut this size down so I could use uh, my other pieces to cut more from. Now, I went and chose a picture that I had taken from when I was um, sitting abroad in Italy a couple of years ago. So this is a picture of the Parthenon in Rome that I'm going to recreate or hopefully recreate with my collagraph today. So I'm going to look at this image and I'm going to look and see what is all the way in the background. What are the furthest buildings or things away from me. So I really see um, this yellow building kind of off to the right um, is really far away from me and then really kind of the, the back left buildings are far away. And yeah, so pretty simple about what is really truly in the background. And we could even kind of count um, some of the, the, f the, not the flooring, but the ground um, as well. Now moving forward, so we're gonna kind of see the back of the Parthenon, the rounded part of the building, and then maybe even uh, that kind of square rectangular part at the top of the building. That's really our middle ground. Um, and then we come forward in our foreground, I'm going to count as those big columns in the front, um, the big uh, frieze as it is called in the art world, um, at the top of the uh, Parthenon, and then all the people and the bodies um, that are really, really close to us. Those are all in our foreground. So that's how I'm gonna break it up. And I'm going to get started by kind of recreating the shapes that are in the background, and then I'm gonna glue them down. And then I'm gonna recreate the middle ground shapes, glue them on top, and the foreground on top of that. So we're essentially gonna have three layers here. now. Um, here's my tip for working from back to front for this. So I think I've mentioned before that in drawing still lifes and things like that too, I like to work from back to front um, because that's how I was always taught to do it. Um, and it helps kind of measure everything out um, and helps you find, uh, make everything that stick in the same proportion. So I am going to work on that yellow building and then those other buildings off way in the back. So I'm going to take this piece that's pretty big and line it up on my cardboard. Oh my goodness, it's almost the same with everything. 
Alrighty, so since I've got this piece that's pretty big, I'm gonna take my pencil and kind of sketch in where the building is. So it really comes down right over here. It's got this big trapezoid sort of shape to it. And I know it comes in right about here. We're gonna pretend it goes all the way through to the middle. Cause we wanna glue down one big piece all together. Cut that off there. And then over on the other side, we've got some other little buildings that come down and back. Okay, so these are our background shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out and then align them with my working surface and glue down my background. Here we go. This part can be a little bit tricky, so if you need an adult to help you out, don't hurt to, it does not hurt at all to ask. Just ha ask someone to help you out. Um, this kind of stuff can be really difficult to cut. So just try your best with the scissors that you have. This technique that I'm doing right here is called burnishing. It's kind of making sure that everything is glued down. There's no air bubbles in there and everything's stuck together. All right, now that I've got my background, I'm gonna move towards my middle ground and recreate those shapes as well. I really like working with this kind of big sheet of uh, cardboard, so I'm gonna lay that down on top of here again and then kind of plan out based on where my picture is where all of those objects will go. So really in my middle ground is that round sort of the building of the Parthenon, um, the rectangular part above uh, the very front of the Parthenon as well. Okay, now that I've got my middle ground, then I can cut it out. So I'm really using a similar technique here that I used um, if you watch the How to Draw a Simple Still Life video where I'm taking the objects that I'm looking at in the photo and breaking them down into simple shapes. So I really uh, took that back part and kind of broke it into this rectangle, but knew that it was going to have this rounded top to it. So thinking about oh, it's gonna look like a cylinder is what that building looks like. So it's got this rectangular shape with this rounded top. I know it has a cone on top of that. And then I know um, that there is this rectangular shape going across the top of that piece. So that's how I broke it down. That's how I got to where I am. So now I'm gonna cut this out and, and then glue it down. Now it's time to move on to the foreground. This might be the trickiest part because I have all of those columns in there that I need to draw and cut out. Um, so I think I'm gonna use this piece because I know it's a little bit smaller. It's gonna help me um, really see where this part of the Parthenon needs to go. Um, and then I'm gonna draw my shapes and cut them out. Now that I've got my main background, middle ground, and foreground, now I can go in and add extra little details to help me really know that this is the Parthenon. So I think I'm going to cut out a triangle piece here um, as the frieze above all of the columns. Um, I think I'm also going to cut out a few human shaped figures that I can glue down here on the sidewalks and then I will be ready to do my color rubbing print. Now I think I'm gonna let this glue dry a little bit. I'm gonna go eat lunch and then I can come back and color. Now that the glue has dried, I'm gonna take my white paper and put it on top of my cardboard creation. And then I took the wrapper off of this crayon and I'm just rubbing the side of the crayon 
all over the paper, making sure to get all the edges and all of the lines so that I can transfer my holograph to my paper. Now my transfer is all completed. We can see our image that's come through. Now you can do this over and over again on different papers with different colors. Do it however you would like. I would love to see what you are creating. Remember to post with all the info down below um, so we can see your wonderful creations. Have an awesome day. Bye everybody.